Hi, hello. Welcome to another episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is August the 1st, 2024. Hopefully this episode finds you well in good spirits and high hopes. As for me, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, today was hot, but overall good. Work was pretty light, so I had some downtime, which was solid. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let me, at the top of the month, so let me go ahead and do the newsy shout out. Uh, shout out to Stephanie Renee. Shout out to Edward Haas. And, uh, you know, any other newsies will keep silent because they, they, they said, ah, we don't need any more names. It's okay. Usually I do like a one shout out. And if you don't want no more, that's okay. All right. But like I said, if you ever want the shout out and I will plug a project, a thing, whatever, you know, this is the time. I, I will always do that for sure. Or, you know, if you want to like say what's up to somebody, I don't know, you, you do, do some cute stuff. Like do me like a little cameo. I'm a cheap cameo for real. real. $5. Oh, that's pretty cheap. Anyway, uh, let's see here. Back to my day. Like I said, it was good. Uh, food corner, food corner was yummy. It was a little different than usual. Uh, I did do hot dogs, so that was like kind of the standard. I did some onion rings on the side. Uh, another side though was I made some fried pickle chips, so that was a thing. It was my first time attempting those. I definitely wish I'd like gotten more to make a better batter because like essentially I just had like some flour. So like I definitely I was like, oh, that was so stupid. Uh, So I might expand upon it in the future. Maybe we'll see. Uh, let's see. But then I also had a little drink that I made. Uh, I mean, it wasn't much of a drink. It was essentially just some lemonade and I threw in some pickles and jalapenos just to see. I, I saw it when I was scrolling on the internet and I said, Ooh, I would drink that. And so I made it at home. It was fine. I, I don't think I'd make it again. Maybe if I had like something to like, uh, dress the rim with, like with like some tahine or something like that. I don't know to add to it. Definitely, if it was alcoholic, that would make it a little better. But these days, I'm just not that big on any kind of mixed drink. Uh, but yeah, it was fun. Just, you know, it was a little nice little thing to do on a Wednesday. A little treat myself. Make myself. Uh, let's see here. Uh, that's about it on the personal stuff. Let me go ahead and do the startup. And then I'm going to get into an actual corrections corner. Got a little bit there. And then we'll get into the rest of the news. I feel like this is like packed. So I'm going to try to get in as much as I can. I know I'm going to leave some leave some news behind. I'm probably going to get more things wrong. But hey, you guys can always get in the comments and uh, let me know, hey, I, I got that wrong or this wrong. And I will always try to do better and uh, fix those things. Because, uh, you know, we want to try to be as accurate as we can, you know. I can definitely understand why some people maybe think, oh, you know, he's doing all this and then getting into this like super serious shit. He doesn't give a damn. No, I do really give a damn. Like, I I take this as my free time to try to talk about this shit, to try to work it out amongst myself and the world, you know, via the internet. Like, this is, this is it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, just a couple of corrections, um, from New York Times. Really, do I get through a paywall here? But thank you, Yahoo News. A uh, bomb smuggled into Iran guest house months ago killed Hamas leader. So this is actually more of an update. I mean, I was going with the news at hand. It was kind of assumed that Ismail Hanini, or uh, I definitely got that name wrong. Uh, Ismail, uh, I'm going to just say it again though. Hanini, Hania, Hania. Uh, we're going to go with Hania, sure. Um, who was a, a top leader of Hamas, was assassinated Wednesday by an explosive device covertly smuggled into the Tehran, uh, into the Tehran, uh, Iran guest house where he was staying, according to seven Middle Eastern officials, including two Iranians. The bomb had been hidden approximately two months ago in the guest house, according to five of the Middle Eastern officials. The guest house is run and protected by Iran's Revolutionary Guard and is part of a large compound known as Nasat. Uh, in an upscale neighborhood of northern Tehran. So, I mean, obviously there's so much more details there, but I just wanted to highlight that say, hey, it wasn't a missile strike. That was just the theory. And then people were figuring out, like, how did you thread the needle through a pretty expansive, like, you know, missile system um, 
and hit someone like that. Like that, that's, that's not really adding up and people were trying to do the math there and they realized, oh, it's not mathing because it couldn't have happened that way. And now we know that it was a bomb. So there we go. And then this is an update on a story I did, um, I don't know, about a, maybe about a week or so or less uh, about flu, a food influencer, uh, what was it, Pen uh, Zhao Ting. Uh, who died of doing a live stream mukbang. Uh, maybe it never happened. I don't know. I got it from the Times of India, uh, also via last podcast, and they're telling me, oh, that might have been uh, a rumor. It might not be real. So I now have to tell you that it might be a rumor. It might not be real. So, you know, these things happen, but I mean, hey, maybe maybe that's my first uh, cryptid story I've covered or whatever, you know, a part of a rumor mill. Uh, maybe that's a new corner. I don't fucking know. But I, I just wanted to do that for my content's sake, you know? Anywho, now let's get on to what I was initially going to cover, the, the main news. We're, we're here. I already feel like I want to take a break, but let's, let's sally forth. Uh, from the Associated Press, Al Jazeera boxer Imane Khalif wins first Olympic fight when opponent Angela Carini quits. Imane Khalif and Angela Carini exchanged a few brisk punches in their 46 seconds of competition in the Paris ring. They were enough to persuade Carini that her Olympic debut was finished. The Italy boxer abruptly walked away from her Algerian opponent and went to her corner Thursday, abandoning her bout, an extremely rare occurrence in Olympic boxing. I mean, yeah, because you're in any Olympic event, this is your whole fucking life. Like, th- this is all you trained for. You're putting it all on the line. And essentially, uh, Karini goes in, because I watched the clip. It, this was cl- very clippable. Um, and, I mean, she goes in all offense, no defense, gets hit, and is like, oh, I'm done. I'm done. It, like, it's like the, and I hate to say this because this is someone who is a professional boxer, but it's like, it's like when you see a guy who's never been punched in the face and they're getting hit for the first time, they're getting their shit rocked, and they're like, oh, oh, I'm done. Now, I think. Obviously, there's a lot of controversy that has been brewing out of this that we're going to be getting into, trying to peel through. Um, But I guess I'll read a a quote here. I felt a severe pain in my nose, and with the maturity of a boxer, I said, enough. Because, hold on, sorry, it jumped on me. Um, I said, enough, because I didn't want to. uh, Or because I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I couldn't finish the match, Karini said. And I mean, I kind of get it. I mean, this is like very post and I I do feel like she didn't fully lean into the controversy that we're going to be getting into, but it is one of those things where it's like, I guess, but I mean, you're putting it all on the line and then you're saying like, oh, you know, but I just had just no one to fold them. But like, I definitely like, you know, I didn't, I didn't cop out or nothing. It's like, it really feels like you just really weren't really ready for this and maybe you just kind of said, okay, ow, 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 uncle, but let's, let's continue. Um... Khalif was disqualified from the 2023 World Championships after failing an unspecified gender gender eligibility test, and her presence at the Paris Olympics has become a divisive issue. Karini, who had a spot of blood on her trunks, said she wasn't making a political statement and was not refusing to fight Khalif. Uh, Karini further said, uh, she is not qualified to decide whether Khalif should be allowed to compete, which is like already like once again, where I'm like, they're tiptoeing here. This is where she's going, okay, like, I'm not saying that I shouldn't have had to fight her, but like, you know, uh, whatever. I'm not being political and like more or less just trying to move on here. And it's like, eh, I see what you're doing. Maybe you just try to finish the fight. I feel like that would have been the most sportsman thing to do. Plus also there's a thing I wanted to add, cause I know I'm probably going to skim through it. The way the fight goes down, this this quick, quick little bout, okay, Khalif's hands gets raised, and she goes to shake Karini's hand, and Karini doesn't shake her hand. She's just crying. She's just like, ah, and just like falls to her knees, and it's like Fortnite emoting. It's like, okay, that's real cool and all, but you once again could have fought for it, because you didn't do that. You got punched in the face, and you gave up, and now we're just going to fucking talk about gender fucking politics now. Like, and I'm sorry, but we've all, I've been here before as a podcaster. We've done this where you literally talk about a person who is just like, I'm just going to say it, a big fucking loser. And it's like, man, if only I didn't have to fight a boy, then I would have won. I would have done so much better. Mm, mm, mm." And it's like, dude, and in this situation, that's not even what we're talking about. But I know I have to keep reading ahead. 
Um, Khalif is an accomplished amateur who won a silver medal at the International Boxing Association, or the IBA, uh, 2022 World Championships. The IBA, which has been banned from the Olympics since 2019 after years of disputes with the IOC, disqualified her from last year's championships shortly before her gold medal match because of what it claimed were elevated levels of testosterone. Um, okay. That is something that you can have as a man or a woman. It doesn't make you anything other than what you are. Like, which we now have to add that Khalif is a woman. On her passport, she's female. That is what she identifies as. That is what she is, period. There's been nothing to really denote that outside of these testosterone levels that we're talking about. Outside of, like, the IBA saying, like, mm, we have, like a, like, a test that we're not going to tell you the details of, but we're just going to say that she didn't, like, meet them. So that's why we took it away. But also, I have to add that they're not in charge. The IOC is in charge, and they have their own standards. And by those standards, Khalif met those standards. So th this whole fucking conversation of, like, trans uh, intersex, which is a big word I heard, and that's initially kind of what I latched onto. I'm like, okay, so I guess we're going to have to talk about that on the pod. But it's like, no, it's not even that. We are talking about a woman with potentially, what, elevated testosterone level, and it's like, oh, uh, we, we got a problem here, Houston. And it's like it's crazy people like what want them to not fight they want them to they should be in their own fucking bracket or blah, blah, blah. Like, that, that's not that does not make any fucking sense dude it is not practical it doesn't make any fucking rhyme or reason here not to mention this is a woman we're talking about you shouldn't have to go through this it's insane to me but here we are i shouldn't be surprised that this is what people want to make hay about but I was kind of, like, hoping that, like, hey, this has already been, like, a thing. I'm not going to have to talk about it. The Olympics has been fun. I got to watch some, like, cool shooting stuff. Um, it was cool to see, like, the USA kind of make their fucking moves. Um, you know, I've already, kinda talk, I've already talked about that. But, you know, there's been more gymnastics. Hell, yeah. Like I said, the tri triathlon was a thing. So I'm like, okay, cool. We're not going to have to deal with this. But once Karini went down, everyone wanted to just, like, make hay about it. And there also is another person who um, is probably going to come under the same kind of scrutiny. Uh, after years of competition in amateur tournaments around the world, Khalif and Lin Yuting of Taiwan suddenly have received massive scrutiny for their presence in Paris. Lin won IBA World Championships in 2018 and 2022, but the governing body stripped her of a bronze medal last year because it claimed she failed to meet an unspecif uh, unspecified eligibility requirement in a biochemical test. So once again, a very similar thing where they're not telling you the full disclosure of what they said and what determined it, but they're like, mm, it just, uh, we just don't feel like she's woman enough so we disqualified him and it's like that could easily just be fucking petty fucking reasonings between fucking organizations or whatever they just wanted to say hey we just don't want you to win actually we don't know because they didn't actually tell us and they refused to so this is what people are going off of in the internet. And then I, I've literally, like, I unfollowed a person I've been friends with because, like, one, I don't give a shit on the internet. If you want to fucking act out and say this fucking fuck shit, then by all means, say that shit on your own. We're not going to be linked then. We're not chained together. But, like, I, I see this motherfucker, like, quoting Elon Musk and shit. And it's like, yeah, a man shouldn't be competing with a woman. And it's like, you haven't even looked into this shit at all. And it's like, yet again, this is, we are talking about fucking identities here at the end of the goddamn day, dude. Because... Once again, these people go out of their way to meet the standard so that they can compete. Because that's all they give a fuck about is fucking doing the sport. At the end of the day, all these people who are bitching from their goddamn armchairs don't give a damn about boxing. They couldn't throw a goddamn punch. Shit, myself included. But at the end of the day, I just want to let them do it. I just want to see people go off and go in. Just be passionate about this thing. Because sports are, at the end of the day, for entertainment. It's crazy that people want to keep talking about this, like, integrity shit and all that. Which I guess I kind of, kind of, Ekro, was it, uh... Was it Katie Ledecky? She's also been doing good. I mean, hell yeah. I, I love seeing people do great at sports. And I mean, she was literally gapping the competition. The camera could even keep up with her. She was swimming so fast. And hey, I'm glad she's peeing clean. That's awesome. But like, I just don't care about that whole integrity as bullshit because people don't care about integrity. I watch people, once again, I say this all the goddamn time. We watch Sammy Sosa. We watch Mark McGuire just fucking doing shit on fucking steroids. No one gives a shit. And once again... This is so far 
far fucking fetched from the conversation because at the end of the day, this is we're talking about two people who are competing legally. They're not doing anything wrong. They they are fine to compete, and people are just mad about it because they're losing or they might lose. Like get over yourself. Just fucking do better. Um, I'm gonna close on this note. Um, neither Keith nor Lynn have ever identified as men or transgender or intersex, which refers as people with both male and female sex characteristics. That, that was just from Time Magazine. Um, anyway, let, let me move on. I know I've, I've stayed a lot on this topic. That's why I said I know, hey, we're going to go along here. And, you know, sometimes you just got to do it. Um, from ABC News, Russia frees Evan Gershkovich and Paul Whelan in historic multi-country prisoner swap. Man, I, they did it. I mean, it's a big swap. I think in total, 24 prisoners all around. So, I mean, a lot of bodies moving all around the world. Um, this is some real politique shit. I don't know. Also, I always say the word real politique knowing I'm probably not using it right. And I don't fucking care. Until someone comes in the comments and tells me exactly how to use it in a sentence correctly, I'm going to use it just laissez-faire, however I want. I don't give a fuck. Anyway, <laughs> Russia. The United States and several several other countries on Thursday were engaged in an extraordinary 24-prisoner exchange, the largest of its kind since the Cold War, and one in which President Joe Biden was directly involved, the White House said Thursday. I love that. I love that the press is like kind of now back on Biden's side, and they're like telling you how alert and how on it he was. Like he was getting like near real-time updates. He was like real hands-on. Like, dude, okay, cool, man. I'm, I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad he was up and alert and he didn't sundown or, like, you know, fucking call anyone Donald Trump or something. Uh, the swap allows the two wrongfully detained American citizens held by Moscow, Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich. I'm never going to say his name right. Gershkovich? Gershkovich, whatever. Um, and former U.S. Marine Paul Whelan to return home. Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris were set to greet and uh, to greet the freed Americans late Thursday night at Joint Base Andrews outside Washington. <clears throat> shortly before Thursday, or shortly before noon Thursday, Gershkovic and Whelan had been freed and were on their way back to the U.S. Secre- uh, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said, or back to the U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said. Um, so, I mean, this definitely lines up. I told you that uh, Gershevich, his trial got, like, sped up really quickly. Um, and then also another person who we're going to be getting to, her trial was also sped up. So it's like, okay, this definitely seems like something's coming on. I wonder who's going to get moved, who's going to get swapped out. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and read further. Uh, some of these men and women have been held unjustly uh, for years all have endured unimaginable suffering and uncertainty. Today, their agony is over, Biden said in a statement. Um, da, 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 da. This, uh, this deal would not have been possible without our allies, Germany, Poland, Slovenia, Norway, and Turkey. They all stepped up and they stood with us. They stood with us. I don't know why he reiterated us. They stood with us and they made bold and brave decisions. Release prisoners being held in their countries who were justifiably being held and provided logistical support to the Americans home, uh, to get the Americans home. So for anyone who questions wh- whether allies matters, they do. They matter, he said. Like, what is this? Are you back in the play? Is this why we're, is this why we're funding a genocide with Israel? Because like, hey, maybe we have to do a prisoner swap one day. And that's why, that's why the blood in our hands, it's just going to make sense, okay? All right? That's why we let Erdogan do whatever the fuck he wants, all right? So that we can fucking make moves like it's Ocean Eleven. And you can't keep up with that, <laughs> Jack. Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, um, let me keep scrolling. Um, da, da, da. Yeah, here we go. The exchange also frees Alslu uh, Kermesheva, a Russian-American journalist, and Vladimir Karamurza, uh, a legal permanent resident of the U.S. Uh, the president of, is gathering the families of Paul Whelan, Evan Gershevich, Alsu Al, 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 uh, Kermesheva, and Vladimir Karamurza at the White House to share with them the news that the, an exchange is underway to secure the release of their loved ones from Russia. Sullivan told uh, reporters on Thursday. It was a J. J. Sullivan. Uh, let's just keep it moving. Um, I'm trying to think. I know I should get to like the Russian side of this at some point of the article. Um, 
Another hurdle, he said, was Russia's unwillingness to agree to a swap that did not include Vladim uh, Krasikov, a Russian operative and hitman who was serving a life sentence in Germany for gunning down an opponent of the Kremlin on the streets of Berlin. Uh, that required ex uh, extensive diplomatic engagement with our German counterparts, st uh, starting at the top with the president himself, who worked uh, who worked this issue directly with Chancellor Schultz. We are deeply grateful to Germany for their part partnership, Sullivan said. Uh, I also believe that there were, um, I think, a dozen political prisoners in Germany who were also exchanged along with two other Russian prisoners um, who we're going to try to get to. Uh, Whelan, who holds U.S., British, Irish, and Canadian citizenship, was arrested in December 2018 while traveling on an American passport in Russia and also ac was accused of espionage. Now, I'm happy that Whelan got out. Uh, I was very surprised because every time he seemed to be like the odd man out in every exchange um, that we've kind of covered on the uh, podcast. Uh, I've, you know, and yes, I've made some jokes and I've apologized. But at the end of the day, hey, levity aside, I'm glad this man has gotten home. And, um, you know, hell yeah to that. Uh, let's keep it moving. Kermesheva, a dual citizen of the U.S. and Russia, was arrested by Russian authorities in 2023 for failing to register as a foreign agent. Uh, Karen Musa was serving a 25-year sentence for criticism, criticism of the war in Ukraine. Um, also, as part of the exchange, Russia has also agreed to release a dozen German nationals who are being held as political prisoners. Um, so yeah, I mean, a whole lot of, you know, bodies moving around here. Uh, let me get to the more of the Russian side here before I move along. The three Russian prisoners handed over from the U.S. are Roman Seleznev, Vladislav uh, Kolushinin, and Vadim Konos... Konos Konoshak. Oof, oof. I'm, I'm not killing it. <laughs> uh, the son of a Russian lawmaker, Seleznev, was found guilty by a U.S. federal court in Washington State running, cyber, running a cybercrime scheme targeting thousands of U.S. businesses, resulting in $169 million in losses. He was sentenced to 27 years in prison in 2017. That same year, Seleznev pleaded guilty to participating in a racketeering scheme in Nevada and conspiracy to commit bank fraud in Georgia, receiving a 14-year jail term for each to run concurrently with the Washington sentence. Um, Kalishin, uh, a Russian businessman linked to the Kremlin, was sentenced to nine years in prison in September 2023 after he was convicted of playing a key role in a stock, ex stock market cheating scheme that relied on insider information obtained by hacking U.S. computer system. Um, Konoshenko was accused of smuggling American-made military equipment into Russia and laundering money for Moscow. He was awaiting trial and facing a maximum sentence of 30 years behind bars. Whew. So that is a lot of motherfuckers moving around for all kinds of reasons. Um, honestly, I'm happy that like all the people we've covered, or not all the people, but at least like I mean a good chunk of those people are now getting home. That's awesome news. Um, it is sad though. I mean, we've covered this shit from like Brittany Griner. Um, there's another guy and they mentioned him in the article and his name is escaping me. But, um, I mean, we've covered all kinds of motherfucking bodies and it's sad that there are just more, um, because I mean, this has just become more or less of a collateral resource for Russia to use. Not that Russia is the only one. I mean, shit, we also have prisoners that we are also really willing to swap. So, or find ways once again with our allies to make a swap happen. So, yeah, a lot of moving and shaking this week. That's for sure. I didn't expect, I, I expected this to happen, but not this week. So I was like, oh shit. And also I didn't expect it to be that many people. Like if you had put a gun in my head and said, Isaiah, read the tea leaves, predict. I would have said Evan, Ger uh, you know, Evan Gershowitz for sure. Maybe Paul Whelan, probably not. That's what I would have said. And I don't, I wouldn't have known the scope of it. I would have said maybe for that one guy, the one hitman. Um, But yeah, I mean, shit, we got a lot more of that. 
so yeah, let's continue. It feels like I think we're only halfway. Ugh, this is this is a long one, y'all. Keep up. I'm sorry. I know. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see here from the CNN. The CNN. I wish they called it that. No, I don't. That'd be weird. Uh, U.S. reaches plea deal with alleged 9/11 mastermind Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. The U.S. has reached a plea deal with alleged 9/11 mastermind. Uh, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and two other defendants accused of plotting the 2001 terror attacks, according to the Defense Department. The pretrial agreement reached after 27 months of negotiations takes the death penalty off the table for Mohammed, uh, Walid bin uh, Atash, and Mustafa al Hawasawi. Uh, prosecutors said in a letter obtained by CNN sent to the families of 9 11 victims and survivors shortly before. The Department of Defense announced the news in a press release Wednesday evening. And after beginning negotiations in March of 2022, the three men agreed to plead guilty to all charges, including the murder of 2,976 people listed in the charging sheet, the families were told. Mohammed and his co-defendants will enter guilty pleas at a plea hearing that could come as early as next week. Uh, we recognize that the status of the case in general and uh, this news in particular will understandably and appropriately elicit intense emotion. And we also realize that the decision to enter into a pretrial agreement will be met with mixed reactions amongst the thousands of family members who lost loved ones, prosecutors wrote in a letter. The decision to enter into a pretrial agreement after 12 years of pretrial litigation was not reached lightly. However, it is our collective reasoned and good faith judgment that this resolution is the best path to finality and justice in this case. Um, it is something that they are more or less calling the least bad deal that they have been shopping to the families and are more or less saying, yeah, this is what we're going to go with. This is what we're sticking with. Um... Let's see here. We'll go ahead and keep kind of scrolling ahead. In 2008, Muhammad was charged with a list of crimes, including conspiracy, murder in violation of the of the law of war, attacking civilians, <clears throat> attacking civilian objects, intentionally causing serious bodily injury, destruction of property in violation of the uh, law of war, and terrorism and material support of terrorism. The U.S. said it would seek the death penalty for Muhammad. Um, now kind of cutting it shorter here, I feel like more or less what really wound up putting this on the table was the torture that happens at Guantanamo Bay. Um, I kind of found that it was like a really kind of dark irony that I'm talking and, and making a comparison to Guantanamo Bay in Israel and we're flashing back to it now, you know, here, you know, in America with all this fucking shit, you know, coming to Guantanamo Bay back in the day. Um, sorry, my brain is melting. But, um, yeah, as the U.S. tried to determine how to handle the issue of torture used against Mohammed and others at secret CIA prisons in the 2000s, the issue posed a legal problem for prosecutors about whether evidence obtained through torture was admissible in court. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole fucking thing there. Um, I mean, also, there's the connections because, I mean... None of these guys are connected to any of the places that we we took our whole fucking war campaign on terror. And, you know, we didn't go to Pakistan. We didn't go to Saudi Arabia. And that's another thing where the families are kind of like really like upset and, uh, you know, I would say sussed. Maybe as some of the kids might say, because it's like, hey, like anytime we're getting close to any of these kind of answers and we want to say, hey, maybe you should talk to, you know, these people in Saudi Arabia or something like that. Oh, now you're saying after fucking 12 years, let's just wrap this up, actually. Now that we've gotten this far along and we're, we're asking these kind of questions, maybe we shouldn't do, maybe we should just put a bow on it, actually. You know, maybe, and it's like, oh yeah, we did torture those people. Fuck, that was wrong. That, you know, like, I know we're trying to prosecute you guys for all these like warlike crimes and war crimes or whatever. And maybe we did some fucked up shit too but like let's just call it even you guys rot in jail or something how about that and that's essentially what we're what we're i guess we're, we're calling it at um so i mean in, in some ways you could say that's crazy um i don't know i definitely i know I'm, I'm definitely cutting it short here this would definitely be something maybe i'd love to kind of maybe come back to and expand more thoughts on uh i mean it's a whole thing I mean, we're not even talking about any of the conspiratorial aspects of that, but I, I don't want to fling the shit in overdrive and we've already gone long. 
So I have one more thing I wanted to cover, and I'll go ahead and let you go. Um, but I just definitely wanted to get that there, put a toehold there. Um, I usually don't talk about, once again, things that happen before the podcast, but it's fucking 9-11, man. Like, you, you kind of got to. So, you know. Um, but yeah, let, let's take it across the pond, but let me go ahead and take my last break, and then we'll go ahead and close it out. Whew. I feel like I've been a mile a minute. Mm. All right. A last story comes from The Hollywood Reporter. Former BBC anchor Hugh Edwards, no relation, pleads guilty to making indecent images of children. This is one of those times where it's like, oh, man, it hates to have like a fucking basic ass stock last name. Like, <laughs> anywho, obviously you, you could look at us and I think you could see that there is no relation unless I was an Uncle Ruckus type character. But let's continue. Uh, former <coughs> former BBC News host Hugh Edwards has pleaded guilty to three counts of making indecent images of children, the BBC reported on Wednesday. The TV personality was arrested in November and charged last month. He made his uh, pleas during a brief hearing at Westminster Magistrates Court in London on Wednesday. The offenses are alleged to have taken place between 2020 and 2022. They relate to pictures that were shared in a WhatsApp chat, according to the Metropolitan Police, also known as Scotland Yard or the London Police. Uh, also, I believe he had caught another situation with the BBC that had led him to be suspended Um in 2023 i think at like maybe the top of the year or something but they're like uh that's a different thing it's unrelated it's not that uh i don't know if they're protesting too much about that or not but like whatever uh edwards assessed on or access whatsapp sorry i can read i promise edwards accessed on whatsapp indecent images of children as young as seven which according to police were sent to him by a convicted pedophile uh, once again, an attempt to add a little bit of levity here. Uh, I, I do think it's kind of funny that across the pond they say the words Peter file. Um, though I've only heard that from the IT crowd, and maybe that's less of a thing these days. Maybe they, they, they don't say it as much. I mean, I, I listen to the BBC every day. I don't think they do. But in my head, I, I they say Peter file. That man is a pedophile. But it's pedophile pedophile in in the states i don't know that probably didn't help or make any of this better i'm sorry uh under british law images can mean photos or videos making indecent images covers a range of actions per its legal definition it can for example include opening an email attachment with an image downloading an image from a website to a screen storing an image on a computer accessing a pornographic website in which images appear in uh, pop-up windows or receiving an image via social media, even if unsolicited and if part of a group, as well as live streaming images of children. So, yeah, I think there was an also issue of the fact that, um, oh, hold on, let's, let's actually, I think we read the quote. Uh, Edwards was arrested on November 8th, 2023. He was charged on Wednesday, uh, uh, June 26th, uh, following authorization from the Crown Prosecution Service. Uh, he has been bailed to appear at Westminster's Magistrate Court on Wednesday, the 31st, 31st of July. Um, let's see... The BBC suspended Edwards, the network's best paid and most uh, high profile news presenter in July of last year over allegations also made by The Sun that he paid a teenager for sexually explicit photos. Police did not take any action against Edwards, saying there was no evidence that a criminal offense had been committed, which, I mean, that, that's intense. Uh, after taking a 10 months of absence, Edwards resigned from the BBC in April on medical grounds. So there we go. That's the other charge. But I'm like, that's equally fucked up. Like, I don't feel like that gets BBC off the hook at all. 
because like, they paid him the whole way there. Like, that's insane. Uh, I, I think I kind of caught a whiff of another article from The Guardian where I think, like, uh, some head of the BBC is like, hey, we're going to try to see what we can do <clears throat> to get the money back, get some of the money back uh, from Edwards. And it's like, yeah, get a time machine and not pay him. Maybe, like, tell people what the fuck is up. I mean, I I get that maybe that puts you in, like, a legal loophole there, but it's like, I don't know. Fight that in court with your expensive-ass fucking lawyers, I would say. I don't fucking know. Um, the police have confirmed that charges are not connected to the original complaint raised with the BBC in the summer of 2023. Nevertheless, in the interest of transparency, we think it's important to set out some points about the events of last year. The statement continued in November, 2023, whilst Mr. Edwards was suspended, the BBC as his employer at the time was made aware in confidence that he had been arrested on suspicion of serious offenses and released on bail whilst the police continued their investigation. At the time, no charges had been brought against Mr. Edwards, and the BBC had also been made aware of significant risk to his health. Who gives a fuck about his health? He's a fucking pedophile, dude. So what the fuck? And now they're like, well, now that we know that like the police are moving along, we we're gonna like make we're we're doing it now. It's like, nah, dude, what the fuck? Like, oh, you can say you're shocked and we're appalled and all that shit, but it's it's late. You knew, and it's it's a little late to like hand in mouth now. So yeah, that's that's where we'll leave it. What an action packed way to start the month. Uh, I went long. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> Please forgive me. Mia culpa. I did my best. I even came in with corrections. You know what I mean? I'm doing my best. I'm trying. Uh, I'm on my hands and knees crying. <laughs> and I and I put in for more than 40 fucking six seconds, god damn it. And I do it every day. Anyway, that's it. That's all I have for today. Um, you know, you can become a newsy. That's a thing. Uh, IsaiahNews1 at gmail.com YouTube, subscribe, please do that Yay, love you for that Thank you, uh, sharing is caring Like, smash and, and Hopefully I see you soon for some more good news I love you, bye bye Mwah.